Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel. Two brothers outdoors, let's get ready for another sawmill adventure. All right guys, so we're heading up on top of the hill. And we're gonna grab out the Don Pine today and bring it down. But things have changed. We got an order for some cherry. And we have a standing order from about a month ago for that dead ash that we took down. So today we're gonna to bring the ash out and we're going to bring a cherry tree down and bring that out as well. Hopefully do a little bit of sawing today. All right guys, stick with us. Jim will join us in just a minute. And we'll get this adventure underway. All right, so unfortunately for us, the ash is up this way and this is the trail to come out from that area. And the bad part of the Don Pine that we can't use is in the way of the trail. So we're going to have to deal with that today. Get that out of the way. So I'm going to take the uh, chainsaw and, and buck this up into sections that we can move with the PV. We have a critter that lives in that hole right there. I don't know what it is. I'm hoping that his den is right there. So if I cut it over here, it'll preserve his den. Once we roll it out of the way, he'll still have a home to live in. I know, it's probably a squirrel and I shouldn't be worried about it, but the older we get, the more we care about wildlife. All right, so, got the log cut. And the uh, critter's home has remained intact. The hole, I put a little brush around the hole there so it feels safe. I just saw him stick his head out, whatever it is. But there's his hole right there. He's in there right now. As I was rolling the log, he stuck his head out. I, I still can't tell what it is. A hole that small has got to be a squirrel. But his home has stayed intact. And we're going to roll these logs out of the way and open up this trail so we can use it. It's out of the way. <laughs> Tim, you can do it. Grunt, Bubba. Uh-oh, don't let it roll back on you. That's like a steamroller. <laughs> take take effect, gravity. <laughs> one time the outer round decks used to have a bunch of massive trees on them yep. and then logging started and they pretty much cleared the outer round decks right off especially mm -hmm. hemlock because they used to bark for tanning right here's a stump that remains from ancient times i'm gonna have tim walk over and stand next to it oh sure you fat tim no tim's not fat as he used to be look at the size of that stump All right, so just to show you how much we care about the critters in the forest, <laughs> that little tree that it ran over, it's an oak tree. We stood it back up and stomped the dirt down around it, and it'll grow. Won't be ready for it. Won't be ready for harvesting in our generation. Tree. But someday. Somebody. Okay, so what do you got in your left hand? My saw. Husqvarna chainsaw. Yep. Wearing a steel T-shirt. <laughs> and what's your hat say? Oh, Hudson hat. <laughs> and yet. Never mind. <laughs> Cut that off. All right, guys. So we got to fish out these logs a little ways. Not bad. So we're not plowing snow. It's not a big deal. We're not going to bore you with the details of getting these logs out of here. We're going to get them down to the mill. We do have to take down a cherry tree and get those logs out today as well. Trying to pull the saw guy to get wedged in between the tree and the stump here. We're going to have to try and cut the stump or the tree or something.
There it goes. All right, we're good now. We're golden. Okay, so that cherry tree right there is the one we're going to take down to try to fill the uh, cherry order. Tim's getting this saw ready. Okay, so we're going to try to drop that tree right in that hole right there. Got two trees together. This one and that one. That's the one we're after. We got her down, fell right where we wanted to. The tree not falling right away was my fault. I told Tim to plunge cut it, and we didn't realize the tree went back this direction, so I had to cut this little piece with my saw to get it to fall. But it went. We stuck the wedge in here. As soon as I cut it, the tree started to go. Tim got a saw out, and away we went. So we're down, we're good, and now we got good usable timber. To make some bullets. Don't forget tape measure. What are we gonna do? Cut them eight foot three? Eight foot six, I think we'll go. Okay. Where the hell's my wedge? <laughs> Under your arm. <laughs> I thought I was bad. Okay, we got four nice logs out of that, eight foot six inches long. The last one's a little bit crooked, but it doesn't matter. We can still get some timber out of it it's boards all right let's run down grab the log arches get that ash down to the mill and we'll come up and grab these out of here and then we'll saw a couple boards today sound good yep now that tim said a few pounds you can bend over and do some of this stuff what <laughs> shut up you're still sticking in the hole i can't make it in the hole Push it down so I hook the chain up. <laughs> Come on, you lightweight. Damn. Come on. Grab the chain. I missed a fat Tim. <laughs> see it? I see it. <laughs> Tim and his right. light now. Let me just show you something, okay? So you know, so you're aware of it. Watch, one hand. Oh, please. <laughs> Let me go turn on my lights so we can do that, <laughs> Superman. It's starting to look like a log yard again. Tim's over there grabbing the final small pine log over there. And I'm gonna grab these two at once. I just drug that one from over there. They're not very big logs, but we can get some 2 by 4s out of them, and we need some 2 by 4s So, you might think that we just redecked our trailer, but we didn't. These are actually floorboards, or roof boards, for a blind. We cut up a little bit of the dawn log today. Actually, we did the other night. <laughs> Alright, let's go cut up some cherry. What do you think of that? So I noticed you had a Hudson hat on. Where Same did you place get that? I got the shirt. Oh, that's a nice looking shirt. Oh, look at that. Yeah. That is really a nice looking shirt. Not what? only one shirt, <laughs> but two. What? Are these some good looking shirts or what? They are good looking shirts. What else did we get what? besides a hat and shirts? What Come else did you get? You got a hoodie. Oh, I. Huh? Look at this. That's a great looking hoodie. But I, I almost don't want to wear it. It's so nice. Well, it's too nice to wear the yeah. saw. I tell you that. Got Hudson on the sleeves. Yes, yeah, sir. All right. So we both got a hat. We both got a hoodie. We both got a shirt from the gang at Hudson and Nicole. 
Thank you, Nicole. We certainly appreciate the gear. We will wear it and showcase it along with our Hudson Sawmills. Absolutely. All right, let's go cut some cherry on the other Hudson Sawmill. All right, All right guys, we have a cherry log here. We got two more to go on the mill. We've got an order for some cherry five-quarter boards as wide as we can get them. So we're pretty much going to saw a dimensional uh, one by whatever we can get out of these. Actually, five-quarter by whatever we can get out of these. Yep. All right, let's get sawing. We're anxious to get this thing going. It's about time. Winter's gone. <laughs> as we're sawing this log, let me give you a little backstory on why we're sawing this log and what we're doing with wood. Now, first off, I'd like to say we don't cut down any tree without a purpose. And we don't take any log out of the woods that we don't already have sold. So last fall, we were contacted by a gentleman named Scott. Scott told me that he was building, or I shouldn't say building, he was opening a restaurant. It's going to be a multi-regional barbecue. And what I mean by multi-regional is he's going to have Texas barbecue, southern barbecue, uh, all different kinds of barbecues from all different areas. Kind of sounds like a very interesting restaurant. But anyway, to get back to Scott. Scott told me that he wanted to make the restaurant rustic, conducive with a barbecue barn. And he had a 28-foot counter out of a Dunkin' Donuts but the counter didn't have a top on it. I don't know what happened to the top, but he would like to put a uh, cherry with live edge on the front of the top and then fill it in with wood planks from the front back. Does that make sense what I'm telling you? Okay, let me put it like this. The countertop is 36 inches wide and to find a solid board out of a tree in this area 36 inches wide is almost impossible so we did have some 15 inch wide cherry that he was going to cut a straight edge on one side and put that cherry towards the front of the countertop so that would give him a live edge facing his customers and then he would fill in the rest of the countertop with flat sawn boards of the same thickness and that's what we're doing right now so we gotta ha cut enough five quarter thick boards to fill in a space 28 feet long and 24 inches wide after we got the other boards on the counter. And that's what we're doing right now. So the way we have it figured, he's going to need about 11 boards, five quarter thickness by eight inches wide. And we're gonna go just a little wider than eight inches so that he can trim it with a table saw to make them fit a little better. So what we're doing right now is I already cut one side of this log flat. We cut it down at one inch increments and the flitches or the slabs that came off that log at one inch thick, we will cut into four foot lengths and we will stick them in our box for crafters. We have a truck box that crafters come and they go pick through the truck box and they get pieces of wood that they want for their crafts. So as we're bringing this log, or now it's a cant because we've already opened the face of it, down to eight and a half inches wide, or thick, we're going to cut at one inch increments. Unfortunately, this is the part where the Sawyer works his poor tail man to death. All right, so a couple more cuts and we should have this to eight and a half inches thick and then we will stand it up and start cutting boards. Okay, so as I stand this cant up, you're going to notice that it swoops upwards on the ends. So we have to roll it 
180 degrees more so that the hump or the swoop is upward. The ends have got to face downward so we can stabilize this against the knees so we don't cut diamond shaped lumber. Okay, so at this point, you want to make sure you do not over tighten your dogs. You just barely want them to hold the cant up against the knees. If you over tighten the dogs, it'll actually cause the knees to rock backwards and you won't cut straight lumber. The lumber will be diamond edged. Or if you look at the end of the board, it'll look like a diamond as it comes off the cant. Okay, so once we get a flat side on the cant, we roll it back over. We got the swooped ends going upward now, but it doesn't matter. Once we make this cut, we will start ripping boards off. Everything we're doing is at five quarter. Okay, so we got nine full boards, that's boards without any weighing on them at all, or bark, out of that last log. And we got the second log on the mill now, and we're going to try to get at least four more, five quarter by eight and a half. Now the same thing will happen with this log. We'll take it down one inch increments and take the flitches or the slabs that come off of this at one inch thick, put them off to the side for our box for the crafters, and we're bringing this down to eight and a half inches thick. That was quick. Okay, so we stood the can up, and the hump is upwards, and now we're gonna start cutting a flat spot on that. Once we get that flat, we'll roll it over 180 degrees and start cutting off some boards. We are now taking down five quarters at a time. It appears from this angle that the spaces that we left open for the saw to kick the sawdust out seems to work pretty good. That sawdust looks like it's flying about 10 feet past the mill. Okay, so with all the boards sawn, we take all the flitches and we stand them up, lock them in place, and we're going to take the bark off of them and make solid boards out of them. That's it for today. Thanks for joining us. Hit that subscribe button. The 
bell so you don't miss future videos. We are officially done. Of course, when we said we're officially done, I still have to cut the slabs up that's on the rack. We throw our slabs on these rack and cut them up in 18 inch lengths. It only takes a few minutes. And then when we get enough for a truckload, we sell it for firewood. All right, guys, if you're new to our channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Hit the notifications bell so you don't miss future videos. We appreciate you joining us. To our subscribers, we appreciate your support. All right, guys, until the next one, we will catch you later.